weather announcement. Another day of unseasonably hot weather across the state of Texas. This heat wave is bringing temperature highs into the triple digits. Later this week, we can expect a major cold front blowing in, so make sure to bundle up. Gosh, isn't that just the weather for you? But it's not as random as you think, and there are a lot of ways to measure and predict the weather. Let's take a look. First things first, let's see how weather is measured. The one you're probably most familiar with is temperature. Temperature can be measured with a thermometer. It's best to place the thermometer in a white box in the shade. Temperatures can be read in Celsius or Fahrenheit, and they tell us how hot or cold it is. Precipitation, or the amount of rain, snow, sleet, or hail falling, can be measured with a rain gauge or with a ruler. For rain, we use a rain gauge, which is a cylinder that catches rain and tells us how much water has fallen in inches. If the water is solid, like snow, you can use a ruler or a yardstick to measure how many inches or feet of snow have fallen. To measure wind speed and direction, we use weather vanes and anemometers. Weather vanes have a tapered end that when pushed by a wind, it points in the direction that it's blowing. Anemometers use cups to capture the wind and to measure how fast the wind is traveling in miles per hour. Air pressure affects a lot of weather conditions. Barometers read air pressure and often indicate the weather that is most likely based on the pressure. Air pressure is measured in inches of mercury. Low pressure tells us that storms are likely, while high pressure indicates drier conditions. You can also tell a lot about the current weather simply by looking outside at the clouds. Usually, the more clouds, the more chance there is of precipitation. But there are a lot of different types of clouds, and they're named by their altitude and shape. The highest clouds are cirrus clouds. These clouds offer no rain and are thin and wispy. Lower level clouds can either be fluffy cumulus clouds or flat stratus clouds. Cumulonimbus clouds are the big fluffy clouds that bring thunderstorms. These clouds are very dark on the bottom and very tall and puffy on the top. Often you can see these off in the distance and then you know that someone is getting a big old thunderstorm. Nimbostratus clouds bring a much slower, softer, and steadier rain. These clouds are long, flat, and gray. Fronts are the edge of a specific mass of air. They can be cold fronts, indicated by a blue line. This is where a mass of cold air pushes underneath the warm air, resulting in cold weather. Or they can be warm fronts, indicated by a red line. This is where a mass of warm air essentially chases off a mass of cold air, resulting in warm weather. Generally, in the northern hemisphere, cold fronts move from the north down towards the south or slightly southeast, while warm fronts move from the south towards the north or slightly northeast. This is just because it's colder in the north and warmer in the south near the equator, and because wind in North America blows from the west to the east. Okay, now let's look at some questions. 